Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Sandhya, Senior Consultant of Glaucoma at Shaker Eye Hospital and I'm here today to talk about a condition of the eye called as glaucoma. What is glaucoma? Now glaucoma is a group of disorders of the eye in which the optic nerve gets affected and that results in irreversible vision loss, meaning the vision that is lost in glaucoma is not going to come back. And therefore, the importance of finding this disease, which is the silent killer of the eye, it's a completely asymptomatic condition. Now, let me explain to you why glaucoma happens and what's the importance. Now, this is your eye. This is an inside portion of the eye. In the eye, there's a fluid that is formed here and then it comes out through the pupil and drains in this portion of the eye. There's something called as the angle and a sponge-like area there called trabecular meshwa. So there's a constant formation of the fluid and drainage of the fluid that maintains the shape of the eye ball. Anything that interferes with this mechanism, either the production or the drainage, with the resultant increase in pressure, results in this condition of glaucoma. You know that sight is very important to us and we don't want to lose this sight. Uh, next, let's talk about what are the risk factors for developing glaucoma. There are many risk factors, most importantly age. Anyone who is more than 40 years of age can get glaucoma, more than 55 it amplifies. Amongst the sex, it's the males who are more prone for glaucoma. Females are more prone for different kind of glaucoma, I'll tell you the two types also. Amongst the race, we are more prone as Asians, as well as Africans, Hispanics are more prone for glaucoma. In the eye, you have certain conditions for which you wear glasses. We have nearsightedness, farsightedness. Now, both these groups are also high risk factors for glaucoma. Presence of any eye injury, if you have an eye injury, then there is a risk of glaucoma. Certain health conditions like the presence of diabetes, blood pressure, low blood pressure, uh, and a headache, which we call migraine, where you have a half sighted headache. Uh, some disorders of sleep which are called sleep apnea syndromes, all these are risk factors for glaucoma. Steroids taken in any form could be for asthmatics in the form of respules that we take or creams, all these are risk factors for glaucoma. One of the most important things you should also know about glaucoma is the family hereditary concept of glaucoma. So if you have a parent, a sibling of glaucoma, your risk is almost 2.1% higher. So if normal patients are going to get glaucoma, compared to them, you are relatively at much higher risk of developing glaucoma. Uh, hence, you should have yourself tested as well as screened in glaucoma. How do we detect glaucoma? We have certain type of tests. Like I told you, it's an asymptomatic condition. There's loss of what we term peripheral vision in glaucoma, the outside vision. One eye compensates for the other and until you go to an end stage, we are uh, bound to not detect glaucoma. Now, the most important test we do in glaucoma, we call it as the visual field test. This I am showing you the field test of a patient who has early glaucoma or moderate, wherein you have seen this is the peripheral field. He cannot see this much. Now, what happens at the end stage when you don't detect glaucoma at all and they don't come to you is the entire vision goes off. So, this is detected on this gold standard test called field test. We do another test called as OCT. This is a scan of the eye. This will give us a color coding. It will compare it to normal people, tell us whether there's glaucoma or not. So this is an important test for glaucoma. We also take a picture of what we term as the optic nerve. This is also one of the tests for glaucoma. And we find what we term as the corneal thickness. This is also an important indicator of glaucoma. Now in glaucoma, you have two different types of glaucoma. Like, like I had explained before, the fluid is formed in trim. Now this area or the angle can be very narrow. So the outlet for the fluid itself is blocked. We term that as angle closure glaucoma. But if the outlet is okay and your sponge like trabecular meshwork is getting blocked, we call that glaucoma as open angle glaucoma. And how do we find this out? When the doctor does the test on you, which is called as gonioscopy. So we use a mirror, test the patient and we find out whether that angle is open or closed. In addition to that, we measure the eye pressure which is what you will be hearing most people tell you, my pressure is high. Now that is also tested by the doctor. Not essential that in every patient it should be high, but it's also a very important indicator of glaucoma. Then we look at you in a microscope, which is called slit lamp, and we do all these tests to find glaucoma. Once you're diagnosed to have glaucoma, 
what happens next? We start your own treatment. There are several treatment options for glaucoma. You have what we term as medical treatment, which are eye drops. Then you have laser treatment and then you have surgical treatment. Now medical treatment, basically what do they do? You have different types of drops or medications which are put inside the eye. So first group and the most important primary line of treatment we call is prostaglandin analogs. They are the drops which are applied only once in the night and their effectivity is very good. They reduce the pressure very, very well. They do not have systemic side effects. So patient's tolerance levels are very good and interchangeable. You have multiple drugs in there, they can change. Next important is uh, the second group of drugs that we have, which will reduce the actual production of the fluid inside the eye. In that we have a group called beta blockers and then we have alpha agonists and we have something called carbonic anhydride inhibitors. Now the importance is the fact that these cannot be used in everybody. For example, the beta blockers cannot be used in asthmatic patients, patients with heart diseases, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, they cannot be used in patients with sulfur allergy. So these are the limitations of usage and we have a new drug, uh, group of drugs rather, which are called as rokinase inhibitors, which will actually have a, uh, an effect of not only reducing the fluid formation, but also increasing the drainage of the fluid. So these are the important class of medication, but what's important to understand is also that most patients, more than 50% of the patients need more than one drug. And with the combination of all these drugs available also, the limitations make possible probably one or two drug usage for us in glaucoma. So what happens when we cannot manage with uh, these drops? We opt for the next level of treatment. So we have laser treatment. For open-ended glaucomas, we do something called as the SLT. And for the angle crochet glaucoma, we open up the passage by using a laser and we call it as peripheral ideology. Last but not the least, and one of the best options of glaucoma when it is not coming under control is surgery. Surgery, you have again a gold standard surgery, it's called trabeculectomy. What we do is we create a valve or a bypass for the fluid inside the eye to get drained and therefore the pressure comes down and it acts very well. It, it will act 24 hours rather than the drugs which probably have their uh, number of hours in which they are active and then their efficacy comes down. So it reacts really well. And for those people where this is not possible or who have uh, a glaucoma which is much severe, we do have other forms of surgery. We have something called as valve surgery where we actually place a valve inside the eye. And uh, for patients whom we cannot restore back any vision, but they start developing pain because of glaucoma, it's called painful blind eye, we do a laser inside the eye, basically make that entire apparatus of the eye which is producing the fluid to stop the production of the fluid. So these are the different modalities of treatment of glaucoma. Now what can you do as a patient for glaucoma? Understand the fact that it's a disease which progresses. There's no way to halt this. So most important is compliance of medication, use your drops regularly, meet your doctor regularly and understand that it's an asymptomatic disease, we're trying to protect and preserve the vision that we have. And now that the World Glaucoma Week is coming up, please have your family members tested for glaucoma because that is where we can pick up more than 40 years, your family history, those should start ringing in the red signs. Okay, so thank you very much for the patient.